I love touching lives. I love inspiring people. I love seeing someone like have the light bulb just turn on. And like, for me, that's the money. Dave Meltzer with Entrepreneurs the Playbook. I am so excited. Satemanali, he is an ex world champion, Super Bowl champion, New England Patriot. But more importantly, you are truly an entrepreneur. And we're going to go through the story because our stories are paralleled except for our football careers. Um, re, I, I, I'm just going to start here. Give me your journey after football. We all know how what it takes to win a championship. But here you come out of the league. And you do really well as a business person. Yeah. What, where'd you start? So, like, I came home. I was actually at the NFL, you know, careless with the money. About six <laughs> months, I found myself in my mom's basement. I have a Super Bowl ring on my one hand, a college degree on the other hand. I was a captain at BYU, like, great career up to this point. And for about eight months, I was lost. You know, when, when you've, all you've done is football, that's all you know. So, I, so tell me, I'm going to stop you there because I was careless with my money as well. Yeah. People, entrepreneurs need to know, because we're going to talk about sacrifice, we're going to talk about discipline, but they need to know what that means, because there's so many athletes, not just athletes, but other people that go through good times, and they get careless with their money. What did you do that was careless? You, you, you have this story in your mind that, all oh, the money's coming, the gravy train's there, it's not, it's going to, I'm good, I'm untouchable, I, I got money, it's, I'm, I'm going to make a team again, I'm not going to get hurt, and before you know it, you get injured, you retire early, and you just, you know, I bought cars and vacations. Buying and stuff for friends? Stuff, family. Family, yeah. yeah. That's another, that's a Bernie and, Kozar and, problem. And my right? parents told me, they're like, son, we don't need all this. I'm like, no, 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 I got you, I got you. You know, just, I mean, I look at how my kids are now, they, they don't even listen to me. I'm like, I get it. N nothing my <laughs> parents could have told me would have had me listen to them until I learned the hard way. So, you know, you look, you gotta save. You gotta live on less than you earn. And uh, I've learned the lesson now, yeah. but I didn't know it back then. I love Devin Funches. He's a young wide receiver from Michigan. Yeah. And I told him, I go, you live like an old Jewish lady because he lives on $8,000 a month, strictly. And two, he loves to cook and feed people. I'm like, you're just like an old Jewish lady. That's saving your money. Now, it's important to pay yourself. Yep. But you're, you're rock bottom again. But I believe that the football field and football locker room are the two places that prepare us most for, for business. Yes. I'm, I'm well educated, but nothing taught me more about how things work in business than that teamwork that, you know, being as small as me, like I had to give every single thing every single day just to survive. Yeah. And that's what being an entrepreneur is. Yeah. How did you kind of turn that switch on from your mom's basement? So my, I had a buddy who showed me this check. It was like 30000 I'm like, dude, that's like an NFL check. That, that's like a, you know, that's a little bit of money for the rookies. And he's like, I'm like, did you make that last year? And he said, no, I made it last month. I'm like, what? What are you doing? He tells me mortgages. So I jump into the mortgage real, industry, real estate. I have no idea what I'm doing. Don't know anything about anything. And it was January 2004. And I just, I looked at my life and I said, hey, like my best days are not behind me. They're in front of me. So I just said this one thing. I said, I'm going to take what I did in football and I'm going to apply it to mortgages. And I set goals. I, I, I lined up my plan and I went after it. And we killed it. Like we were like, you know, that was a good day to be in the mortgage. Yeah. Industry. Like just, so we, you know, made a great money in 2004. We doubled it. We doubled it. Four years in a row, we just doubled, like more than doubled the In business. Utah, you were in Utah. Yeah, I was right in Utah. Yeah. We, were, we were doing loans in real estate all over the country. I bought real estate, had properties Was there everywhere. pressure when you, because you went to BYU, mm -hmm. did ex extremely well there, but when you lost everything, like I have a lot of guys in transition from the league that when they end up broke, they, they have to move out now you stayed there because they, they were too embarrassed. Their ego was in their way that, God, everyone thinks I'm a hero and I'm living in my mom's basement. What, how'd you, did you use illumination? How'd you deal well, with it? Well, I'll tell you. So I, we did so well with the real estate industry and mortgages and just so successful. Money wasn't an issue. Right? Yeah. We could buy anything, travel anywhere. We had, it was me and my wife. We had a brand new baby, you know, this 6,000 square foot home, another 8,000 square foot home. We had properties in all over the country. and Sound familiar. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, you talk, when I really hit the bottom was when the mortgage industry, the recession of 2007, 2008, 
and embarrassed or humiliated. Didn't yeah. want to show my face in public. People, was, you know, I was driving to bands, at Escalator Rover, and people were like, Where, "Where's your cars?" I was like, "Oh man, you know, I just, you know, I get, <laughs> you know, try to avoid the conversation." Right. And you know, how did I deal with hitting the bottom? And it was humbling. Like even to the point, I'll just, I don't know if we'll talk about this, but 2009, we we've, we downsized the home. We sell everything. My wife's wedding ring. I was in a band. All my keyboards, guitars. Your Super Bowl ring. And in 2009, I'm yelling at my kids about pouring too much milk in the cereal. And I'm when I say yelling, I mean it's like I'm yelling, "What the hell are you doing? <laughs> Don't you were wasting money because like we were we were always behind on rent. You know, lost our homes, oh. lost our cars, and it was. I just remember being so depressed. Like, how do I feed my family? And I had this thing inside of me that was like, there's one thing that you can go sell today that would allow you to try to restart a business. I jump online, I find this collector in New York City. My wife takes me to there and I'm, I'm bawling like a baby. Like I'm crying and I'm angry. I'm like, why, how did I get here? I fly to New York City, like hardly any money in the account right now. And you know, at the time we're living in a 900 square foot townhome. I get to New York, I give my ring and so angry you know if you've ever worked hard like you know you've been in the industry for a long time when you yeah. get to that the pinnacle and you work your butt off to get to the top and you actually win the super bowl and then you got this ring and it just it means there's so much meaning it's more than just diamonds it, it's the hard work the sweat the labor all these hall of famers that i've been with some of them their only regret is not winning one never get like they got everything else in life yeah that's how much it means yeah it was uh it was a sad day, man. Like I bawled like a baby there, and I and the, the flight attendants were like, "Are you okay?" Because I was sobbing. Right. And then in 2010, right a year later, <clears throat> just can't handle it. Like all the money I get from the Super Bowl ring, like business is still not working. I file a bankruptcy, right? 2010 bankrupt, and but I'll never forget what football taught me. Right, you get down, you get knocked down, you start to play tricks with your mind. And you know, great athletes, we don't lose our skill sets. We lose our mindset. Hmm. And when we lose the mindset, right, everything else goes. And so 2011, I find myself rebuilding my life. And I'm like, dude, I, I can't do this. Cause I just know like, I felt like God had created me to be, do some great things, impact people, make a difference, like be this global speaker, teacher, trainer, author. So I end up going to knock doors in my mid thirties, 35 years old, fly to South Carolina, I touch down, no money in the bank account, and I go learn how to be a door-to-door -door salesman to rebuild. And it took off from there, but you said something right in the locker room when you're down at halftime. I remember we were playing Virginia in 2000 on national television, and we're down 21 to zero. We come back to win that game 38 to 35. There's so many instances in my life, and this was one of those instances where I had to get back up. And you know, like today, I mean, life's amazing, but yeah. I, mean, I did sell the ring. Uh, the collector did say, you can get the ring back if you bring me someone else's ring that has sold their ring. Oh, wow. That's the only way I get my ring back. So, so He didn't put a deposit down or something. No, man. It, it I mean, it, it's going to cost me a penny to get it back. But I'm, I'm blessed today. We're very successful in what we do. And Luckily, there's, there's a times. lot of Patriot Super Bowl rings out there. There is. You know, we could maybe get Putin. He stole his. He stole crafts. <laughs> we could get Putin's back for you. <laughs> That, like, I've never you, thought you about like that. The rock. I never, we can oh, infiltrate yeah. there. I know. <laughs> That'd Get be awesome. Smell. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. You know, um, going bankrupt myself, yeah. and you know, you go through this catharsis. But you know, for me, football meant so much because the game wasn't over. You, you know what I mean? It's like, and there's a word that comes to mind that I never thought I would use, and I use it every day, and it's faith. You know, and I and I grew up, you know, I have a religious family and I was almost anti-faith because I put such a dogmatic religious spin on it that I was adverse to it. And now I live by faith. Like I tell people, put faith in what you believe in, put, you know, feed what you believe, put, you know, starve what you doubt. But for me, faith, I have so much faith. And I realized that when I played football, I was a faithful person, you know, and that when you're as small as me and everybody you from have the time, to you, I mean, we, our sons are polar opposites. They're, your son's built like you, mine. And I watch him and I and it brings up some hard feelings because I remember every team from seven years old I tried out for or stepped on the field. I ha You walk on a football field, everybody's like, okay, you're starting. And you got to prove that you can't start. Not me, right? And that's when you go door to door, you got to feel like I felt in my athletic career. 
right? Oh, you, man, you, they it's got, that matter, right? I'll tell you, I had no idea how to do a sale. <laughs> I watched a guy do a sale and I felt really pushy to me. And he's, he walks in the house, I'm, I was uncomfortable. Sales was not my natural thing. It just wasn't. And I looked at my wife and she's like, go get this done for us. We were broke. That's I say, motivation. Like, yeah, when we were when I say broke, I mean we had we were behind on rent. We lost our homes. We were, you behind were counting on the, the milk, ounces, like the like milk, it. and the, the, like do we pay the cell phone bills or do we put gas in the car? It was especially when you come from success. Yeah, very depressing, and so I forget getting out there. I just I said like like you said like I had to go prove myself. Satema needed to get successful again. And I loved it. That summer changed my life. Like 2011, knocking doors for a living, grinding six days a week, like being on the doors till 10:30 at night, being in a home till 11:30 trying to get a sale because you, you you eat what you kill. Right. You yeah. only make money if you sell. And I have so many fond memories. Like I was, that was a refiner's fire for me, but it was the best thing I could have ever done. That's you know the radical humility that came from me losing everything and the same because it was the first, like for me. Uh, making money, I was a millionaire nine months out of law school. It was like you playing football, yeah. right? When I stepped into the business side of things, it was like, oh, Dave Meltzer starting team, right? Natural salesman. Yeah. Money was my, you know, my instant unconscious competency. So when I lost everything, it was like the end of your football career because now I'm completely humbled. You know, we were looking for change in the garage to, to make the groceries, right? And yeah. I was afraid to ask for any money from anyone because I'm CEO of Lee Steinberg. I'm supposed to be Midas. I took over for Jeff Morad, who now owned the Padres, right? And I'm here sitting, literally, they took everything from me. All my car, same thing. I'm in a rented house with rented furniture and where I saw, <laughs> it's so right. Yes, yeah. yes, everything's rented, rented home. Like, and you just here's how scrape by. God worked for me though too, is I started selling everything I had and my wife started an eBay business that ended up being the godsend real success of, of being able to start this business because I had income coming in because my wife had to sell stuff so we could eat. Yeah. And I started getting faith going, everything happens for a reason. I would have, I truly believe this. I would have either ended up divorced, dead, or both if I continued to be as successful as I was. Because I had lost all the things my mom taught me, all the things that made me me. And my wife told me, go take stock in who you are and what you want to become. Or I'm, this is before I went bankrupt, right? Was there, you know, it takes two people. Your wife stayed with you. You know, my wife, she, when we were making the money in the mortgage industry and I was like spending it, as investing it, growing it, putting it in different things. And I remember she was like, we should probably like save some money. I'm like, save? <laughs> Talking about like, man, I'm like, I touch it, it turns to gold, like a lot of ego and pride. Yeah, that was me. And my wife has been like my best friend support and she stuck by me. I made these choices that caused this riff in the business. And so today... Whenever I someone say, "Hey, I got this investment," I'll look at it. But every time I'm gonna go talk to them. even if I know the answer is yes, I'm like, I'm gonna go run this by my business partner. Like, okay, it's my wife. Yeah, I run everything about. She sees all the books. She sees everything, and she's been, she's been the best thing for me. Me too. My wife also. I, I trust everyone. You know, because I, I look for the best in everyone. Yeah. And so, yeah, <laughs> right. Got and you. So anybody's not even just the business deal. Anybody that I hire that I'm looking to do business with, I take them out to dinner or lunch or something with my wife because she she's an e-reader, man. She'll look at someone and say, mm, no, nope, there's something about that. You're not, you're not gonna do it, Dave. And I have built this phenomenal business off of people and empowering people, which is the next thing I wanna get to. You know, the next step for both of us is write books, inspire people, you're an excellent speaker and sales yeah. guy now. But you know, it's so nice to give back and to monetize that as well in yes. a very abundant way. What parts of what you're doing now, you know, really inspire you and are going to take you to the next level? What I do now that inspires me is like, it's really everything I do. Like I got this Instagram presence, this, this social media presence. And like I take, him, take care of my kids, take them to school. My clients, I teach them how to do the same, how to make a lot of money while still being an incredible husband or father or mother or wife and like bringing their spirituality in alignment and helping them to produce results. Again, clients losing weight, clients doubling revenue, clients hiking Mount Kilimanjaro, losing 100 pounds, like just 
you know, renewing their marriage vows. I love touching lives. I love inspiring people. I love seeing someone like have the light bulb just turn on. And like, for me, that's the money. Like, that's the gold. Yeah, I make money in my business, but there's nothing more uh, fulfilling than just seeing people or who are in the like the deep, dark abyss of where we've both been. Yeah. And to see them like get up, to get that fire and belief again, and then come back. So, you know, obviously we're both faith-based people. Yeah. But part of the faith to me is discipline. Yes. Right? And I, my, my saying in life is enjoy the consistent every day, persistent without quit, pursuit of your potential, your truth. You know, I watch you in the gym <laughs> and I know there's there's a serious discipline there. How do you help inspire or teach? Because it's difficult for me. If I can just teach you to be consistent and disciplined, you can do whatever you want. Because right? yes. we all know what to do. It's that ego that gets in our way. We take a couple of days off. You diet, and then you take, what do you do to teach people discipline? Uh, most importantly, I live what I teach. There's a sure. reason why I, why I pound a gallon and a half of water a day, I read scriptures with the family, I take care of my body, I market, I do the things that I'm asking them to do. And I said big goals, like huge impossible games. The greatest teacher to me is someone who's living it, and then number two, so I live it. Like I got goals, I, I, wait, I do my Sunday planning, I take my wife on a date every week. I take care of my kids. I made my kids breakfast this morning. You can see it on Instagram. Me too. I'm right with you. <laughs> yeah, you got it. So like, we live it. And then the second thing is like, you have to learn how to be a powerful communicator. And a powerful communicator is not just someone who can say the right things. They know when to say them, how to say them. So it lands. Right? If Tom Brady throws a perfect ball at me and I don't catch it, that's, that's not great communication. Great communication is speaking in a way that it lands with people, they can catch it. And so from living it, teaching it, and then just practicing communicating it and being a master teacher to me, you become a master teacher. And that means like sometimes you're not even using words. It, it will land with people. And like this is like my life's mission right now, David. It is my life's mission to inspire people across the globe to level up in their marriages, their families, their spirituality, of course their business, right? Of course it they're- comes along with yeah, it, Yeah, right? you got it. And I, I truly believe when, when a person is in integrity and in alignment with themselves, like I don't need all the, the external motivations. Yeah, that's fun. But man, when someone gets right here in their heart and they, they get clear and they're committed and they can do what they said they would do, the discipline follows every time. You know, and I, I watch in the gym, I watch you coach your, your own kids. You know, I, I, I've been watching you for a while and it means the most. You know, I tell, I have four kids, three teenage daughters and a little boy who's friends with your son, actually. But I, you know, I always tell my wife, I go, they don't listen to me, but they watch me. And I love my videos because they're watching even my videos and they're listening to the podcast and the TV and they're constantly watching me, which means so much more. We get to a point now, what I call fulfillment, pur profitable, purposeful fulfillment, right? Yeah. And very passionate. We're inspired almost all the time. What challenge do you have for yourself, right? There's, we, we're teaching so much, but I like people to know what's your biggest challenge and that you're overcoming right now. I, I would say the biggest challenge that I face right now is, is playing too small mm. and letting complacency. Look, look, we live in a beautiful neighborhood. Life's amazing. And if I forget that that's not just for me to enjoy, I have a responsibility to go play big, to go reach, right? To write more books, to, to market more podcasts, to get on more stages. I would say that's the biggest thing is, is playing too small. Like not dreaming bigger and you know, bigger, like once you have X amount of dollars, more money doesn't make you more happy. So it's really about how many more families can I help? That's my biggest challenge right now. I just told my wife, in fact, this morning, I said, hey babe, I'm, I'm playing too small. And she's like, what do you mean? Like you're pushing hard, I'm like, no. No, 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 baby. I'm like, I'm like a V12 twin turbo, and I'm only playing like six cylinders. I know I can do more. I know I can be more, and and so that's really, I would say, successful people. If you're not careful, you start to just enjoy life, and you're like, look, if you where much is given, much is required. We got a duty to go help people, to to give back to the football communities, the sports communities, the church, the community, to to the people who don't have what we have right now. That's our duty. Yeah, and we also have a duty to ask for help. Yes. You know, right. Yeah. Like, guys like us, I tell people all the time, it's one thing to be giving, which comes naturally, especially for us. But the hardest thing for me is to ask for help 
because even now things are going, because I want to play really big. I always tell people the universe doesn't know size. You're limiting yourself. People tell you all the time. I even Diane Cannon is a good friend of mine. And I told her I want to, I was born on January 11th. So I want to live to 111. And I loved her answer. She goes, why are you limiting yourself? Right. Why? And I tell, and I see it all the time, including you. Like I see that, like, why are you like you come in here and I'm thinking, oh yeah, so Tim and I are going to do a lot together. Wait till I open without touch of favor. Right. Cause you never know who the gatekeepers are yeah. They give you one touch of favor and say, oh, by the way, you know, here's your feature with entrepreneur magazine. Here, let's get you going on just play big to inspire people. Last question. And this show's always too short, but you have this worldly experience. You've, you know, had the, ticker tape on top of you for the world championship. You've been in the basement of financial life. You know, your family life is obviously in your spiritual life has always been in order. And I think that's why you were able to sustain what it is. But through that whole journey so far, and you got a lot more to go. If I could ask for just one piece of advice, you know, that golden rule of Satema, what would the golden rule be? That's a, that's a good question. The golden rule, one thing I, I would say this, be honest about what you really want for your life. Hmm. Like be so honest, like you, we get one life on this earth. I'm sure there's other things to come after, but like too many people, they lie about what they really want. They don't tell the truth. They can't, I wanna do this. I wanna feel this way. I want a marriage like this. I wanna be a great dad or I wanna have this booming business. They don't tell the truth. And my thing is like tell the truth about what you want, where you wanna be and design the plan for your life. So at the end of your life, you're like, this is not only what I wanted, it's way better than I wanted. And then you can have it as big as you want. So that's it. Yeah, I always say too, you cannot outdream God. Right? Amen. And people Amen. you cannot outdream them. And so know what you want and don't be embarrassed. There's a book by David Corbin called Illuminate, which directly reflects this, right? Know your truth, pursue your truth, but don't be afraid of saying that that's what I want. Too many people are stuck on, you know, why would I do the whole why me? It's like Think big, dream big, act big, yeah. you know, and you got to, we sacrifice, right? But we're inspired. We, we're active people. The amount of time that we spend to do, you're the first one in the gym. Then you make the breakfasts. Then you have your business. Then you're helping others. Then it goes on and on. And all day long, we're just getting re-inspired, not tired. And Amen. that's yeah. to me, the epitome, why I was so excited to have you in here. We're going to do so much more. Uh, name of the book is Winning. Winning After the Game. Winning After the Game, and you are the epitome of winning after the game. And I look forward to winning with you, man. I need a new teammate here. Thank you, brother. I'll be the smallest left Looking tackle Looking forward for to you. it, man. Looking cool? forward to it. I'll, I'll be your muscle, man. I'll be there your muscle, go. man. All right. Well, it's Dave Melser with Satemanali here with Entrepreneurs, The Playbook.